Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a lung and this is taken from a case of miliary tuberculosis in the lung. So let's first uh, appreciate the normal lung parenchyma which is composed of these uh, very spongy appearing alveolar spaces which essentially just contain air. So it looks quite spongy and uh, quite empty. Very obviously, we can see that there are many of these uh, areas that appear more solid dotted throughout the lung parenchyma. And this is a classical low magnification appearance of miliary TB. Usually when we say miliary, we are referring to the millet seed, which is very small. It is less than two millimeters in maximum uh, dimension. So if you look at the scale here, which is 10 millimeters, let me just um, magnify a little bit and show you one typical example. This is 2.5 millimeters. We can see that most of these uh, little areas of inflammation are actually less than two millimeters in maximal dimension, hence miliary. So let's zoom in to a particular area and I'm going to focus on this area. Here is a recognizable bronchiole. And we can see that it is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium. Moving over to the area adjacent to it, we can see that there are some funny looking areas here and here again with a central pink region. So this pink region represents necrosis and what we are seeing is a very amorphous appearing eosinophilic material. Grossly, this would look whitish and very crumbly and it will kind of resemble cheese. Hence, it's called caseous necrosis based on the gross appearance. So there is central necrosis, but around the necrosis, there is a cuff of cells, and these are epithelioid cells or epithelioid histiocytes. Essentially, they are activated macrophages, and um, many of these cells have a kind of elongated nucleus with quite abundant cytoplasm. Here is another one. And hence, because this is a, an aggregate of epithelioid histiocytes, this is a granuloma. And because there is central necrosis, this is a necrotizing granuloma. So the process here is necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. And you may also notice that there are some eye-catching cells which are very large. These are multinucleated giant cells and there are many nuclei which appear to be arranged uh, in this particular cell in sort of like a C shape arrangement. And in other areas, for example, over here, again, this is at the periphery of the necrotizing granuloma, we can see two very obvious multinucleated giant cells where the nuclei are all arranged in a horseshoe shaped arrangement. Please take note that the nucleus itself is not horseshoe shaped, rather there are multiple nuclei that are arranged in a horseshoe configuration. And there is a special name to this cell and this cell is known as a Langhans giant cell. Now this is not the same as a Langerhans cell, that is seen in another condition, for example, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. And however, this is the Langhans giant cell. And Langhans giant cells can be seen in TB. There's another one here. However, they are not specific for TB. They can also be seen in other granulomatous processes and infections. So typically, when the pathologist reviews a case like this, we would actually do a special stain, which is the Zeal-Nielsen stain, and we would scrutinize the section very carefully, particularly in areas of necrosis, to look for acid-fast bacilli. And of course, if this tissue is cultured, it will likely yield mycobacteria as well. Miliary TB typically arises due to hematogenous spread with the bacteria being seeded into the venous circulation. Hence, we get multiple areas of infection and many of these actually coalesce. You can see, for example, here the pink necrotic areas in the center of the granulomas and they are coalescing to form a larger area of necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. So in summary, this is a case of miliary tuberculosis with multiple foci of necrotizing granulomatous inflammation together with Langhans giant cells. Thank you.